In the directions of Bakhmut and Luhansk, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to eliminate the Russian invaders and destroy their military equipment. That's according to a statement made by Colonel General Oleksandr Sersky, commander of the ground forces of the Ukrainian armed forces, on his official Telegram account. Russians on the front are still being eliminated by the defense forces. Our warriors are moving in the direction of Bakhmut, commander wrote. Colonel General Oleksandr Sersky also said that the 45th Separate Artillery Brigade was doing a great job working with the air reconnaissance units of the 63rd Separate Mechanized Brigade in the direction of Luhansk. The enemy is losing equipment as a result. A video of the 45th Separate Artillery Brigade destroying a Russian fuel servicing truck was also posted by the commander of Ukraine's ground forces. All Ukraine will bring back its regions. Oleksandr Sersky, Colonel General, emphasized, the enemy has no chance. This weekend, President Vladimir Putin's power appeared to be in jeopardy for the first time in his more than two decades in office. And despite the fact that the rebellious Russian mercenary forces that attacked Moscow have left, Putin will have trouble portraying himself as a man in complete control. That could pave the way for additional challenges to his rule at home and weaken Russia's involvement in the Ukraine war. Yevgeny Prigozhin's Wagner troops swept into Rostov-on-Don, a city of 1.1 million people, and seized the military headquarters there with astonishing ease and the stated goal of ousting Russia's defense minister. After that, they made a lightning fast march hundreds of kilometers north toward the capital without encountering any significant opposition. Some even cheered, indicating that Prigozhin's portrayal of himself as an enemy of an elite that is corrupt and incompetent resonated and will not go unnoticed by those surrounding Putin in the days to come. Senior Fellow for Russia and Eurasia at the Institute for Strategic Studies Nigel Gould Davies stated, this whole episode has so really profound anxiety across Russia's elites. The rebellion by the former protege of the Russian leader severely shake confidence in Putin among those around him who matter. As Wagner convoys rolled through Russia for several anxious hours, the Kremlin appeared powerless, smashing occasional roadblocks and shooting down military aircraft sent to stop them. Authorities rushed a motley assortment of troops and police to protect Moscow as the majority of Russian forces were encircled in the fighting in Ukraine. They dug up roads and even blew up bridges to slow the assault. On that pivotal day, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoiv and General Staff Chief Gen. Valery Gerasimov vanished from public view, enhancing feelings of weakness and controllessness. A somber-looking Putin accused Prigozhin of betrayal and compared the situation to the fall of the Russian Empire in 1917 in an address to the nation that was broadcast early on Saturday. However, hours later, the leader of Russia granted Prigozhin amnesty subject to his exile in Belarus. It was a remarkable compromise for a man who has relentlessly suppressed any sign of dissent and has sometimes violently silenced foes daring to criticize him. Despite the Kremlin's attempt to portray the deal as a wise move that helped avoid a looming bloodbath, In contrast to the Kremlin's methodical crackdown on dissidents and opponents of the war at Ukraine, which has resulted in prosecution, forced exile, and even violent deaths, Prigozhin's swift pardon stood out. In Putin's Russia, many people saw his handling of the uprising as an unforgivable sign of weakness. Prigozhin demonstrated that it is possible to capture a city of a million people with impunity, put demands to the country's leadership, refuse to obey its orders, mount military marches on Moscow, while killing Russian soldiers on the way, said Viktor Alksnes, 
a retired Soviet Air Force colonel and current hardliner who expresses views that are shared by many Russian hawks who have been increasingly critical of Putin's rule and his handling of the war in Ukraine. Russia is getting closer and closer to its final irreparable demise. After repeatedly failing in his 16-month war in Ukraine, the blow to Putin comes. Gould Davies said that the mutiny has made the military unstable and hurt troop morale badly, giving Ukraine, which is just starting its counteroffensive, new opportunities. Gold Davies made the observation that this is Russians killing Russians on Russian territory while Russia is trying to contain a Ukrainian counteroffensive. Russia does not want this during times of war. Although the agreement with Prigozhin may allow for the control of some Wagner troops by the Defense Ministry, a request that the mercenary leader had previously rejected, which led to the conflict. It is only a small amount of compensation for the significant harm that the crisis has done to the authority of the government. Political analyst Kirill Rogov, who has been studying Putin's politics for a long time, made the following observation. In an apparent belief that he could completely control Prigozhin, he tolerated Prigozhin's disagreement with the top military leaders as part of his strategy to shift blame for the military mistakes in Ukraine and pit elite members against one another. Rogov wrote in a commentary that Gollum's creator always thinks that he can be stopped and he makes him look increasingly convincing in order to scare others. In the end, Prigozhin was stopped by Putin, but a high cost.